Alex. Who is that? Okay, folks, we have uh, two uh, featured speakers today, uh, both running for a state level position. And, you know, it's really an honor to have Rich Bowling with us. Rich was a GOP chairman for the last three and a half years and did a great job, even though we disagreed on some issues. He did a great job. And uh, we have a strong GOP presence here and, and a very conservative presence here in Lexington County, the most influential county in, in this whole state. And around this room, we've got some of the leaders in the state of South Carolina. So it, even though it's rainy, overcast, it's a great day, Ron. Don't let that part out. Ron, it's a great day in the state of South Carolina. <laughs> so I smile. So it's uh, Rich, if you'll come on up. Rich Bowling's going to make a presentation about the reasons he's running for office and tell us he's going to tell us what's right and wrong with, with the state government and why he should be the next senator. I know he's a very conservative person and if he's elected, he'll do a good job. So Rich Bowling. Rich. All right, I'm just I'm going to use my card um, to keep me on track. You know, I'm going to pass these around. You know, mine just that'll give you an idea of what I believe. But initially, uh, I have a set of core values that I think are important to anybody who wants to be in, in government. And most people have some set of core values, but unfortunately, for a lot of people, their core value is getting reelected, and, <laughs> and that's what they pursue, and that's their their uh, framework for governance. And my position is that government is not good at nearly anything. That there are necessary evil, and the less government we have, the better. That if we were free, we would be much more efficient, our lives would be much better, and our economy would be much better. So um, with that framework in mind, that's how I'm going to approach any of the issues. Um, I think some of the biggest problems we have is the uh, same problem that you see in, in, in all government where the, the candidate or the uh, elected officials are in office interminably, and I use that word on purpose. And once they're, uh, once they're in office, they don't have any sense of obligation to the electorate. And I think term limits would be a very good thing, and, and I would like to have term limits from the local soil and water conservation board all the way up to the governor, which of course we do for the governor, but we don't anywhere else. So it seems to me if it's good for the president and the governor, it would be good all along. But of course, the people that are going to make that rules are the people who are would be affected by it, so they don't want it. But I believe it. I'll, I'll impose it on myself. I don't want to be. I frankly don't really want to be part of the government just to be part of the government. I want to be part of the government to devolve the freedoms that we used to have back to us. And that's one of the things that I want to run on is getting rid of law. I would love to go through and find. 30 or 40 percent of the laws that we can just scrap all together. There's whole sections of government. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. When I was in, I used to be the general counsel to the Secretary of State back in the mid 90s, and one of the functions or one of the uh, projects we had was to try to get rid of the whole office completely, which would involve constitutional amendments and legislation. And I specifically went through every single mention of the Secretary of State in the statutes and, and figured where those duties would go. And it's a, it's a great example because the Secretary of State is in charge of notaries, but so does the governor's office. The Secretary of State handles business filings, but so does the Department of Revenue. The uh, Secretary of State does abs deals and, and relations with other states, but so does the governor's office. So there's all kinds of duplication, and it would be very easy to move all those duties to the other places where they're already being done, move some of the personnel, and get rid of the general counsel, which would have been made, get rid of the Secretary of State, and a whole bunch of other expenses that go along with that. And then we have the LLR, which is a, a fine example of managing problems that don't exist or creating problems to justify your existence. Amen. And, uh, I, you know, why are we regulating people that do nails? Is the free market not capable of deciding who doesn't know how to do nails? <laughs> and, even, and who are we to say that they're not able to do nails? Maybe some people like that. You know, I mean, it's obviously kind of a concept, but... That, that's such a dangerous thing, you know. If you get the nails wrong, that could be life-threatening. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, that just goes to another point. They're always trying to protect us from ourselves. Now, it's, it's obviously a legitimate purpose of government to protect us from each other. 
but it, it's not a legitimate purpose of government to protect us from ourselves. And if we're not smart enough to wear a seatbelt, they're going to pass a law. And every time something bad happens, they want to pass a law. Um, you know, there's a, supposedly another uh, a new legislation to keep kids in school by denying them their driver's license. So we got these bad seeds who don't care anything about school, but do care about their license. And they know how the game is played, so they'll go to school, they'll screw up the class, they'll interrupt, they'll cause problems, and they'll get their license. And then uh, the kids that want to learn are stuck with these kids who don't really care, who would be better off not in school, be better off working through construction or learning a trade or dealing drugs or whatever it is they're going to be doing, and not bothering the kids that actually have a purpose for being in school. But our government wants to tell parents how to keep their kids in school. And if the parents don't care enough to keep their kids in school, why do we think the federal, I mean the state government, is going to be any more effective at it? Somebody's got to drive a trash truck. That's right. And uh, if they unionize, they'll make plenty of money. Or if they work under the table and don't have to take all the government taxes out of it. Um, and I could go on and on and on. Taxes are another big issue of mine. I feel like right now we pay, if you measure everything, it's at least 50% of our income. <coughs> And the government keeps saying they need more. But if, if we're giving half of our income to them and they're working on, we're living on the other half, it seems to me that's, that's more than enough for the government. If I had my brothers, the whole government from local to federal would have about 10 or 15 percent. And then we'd be responsible for all of our, our own health care, our own babysitting, our own food, our own clothes, our own shelter. And if we couldn't do it, then we'd have to call on our fellow man to help us voluntarily instead of by force, which is what we have now when the government takes our money and helps people who are either less fortunate or good at gaming the system. And I think there's plenty of the latter. So, like I said, I just don't believe government can do anything very well just by its very nature. I mean, you can't respond to uh, eventualities by government like you can with the private industry. If there's a problem that comes up, they have to go through committee, they have to get approval, they have to go adjust the budget, they have to have permission. They just can't respond like a private industry. And so that's, that's the nature of government, and that makes it inefficient. And we need to keep that in mind as we're making all these edicts for us as citizens from the government. So the bottom line is I would like to get the government out of your life. I'd like you not to even know I was doing anything up there because I was the government was getting less and less involved in your daily activities. So, I I think that's enough to uh, about get you all glossed over. Let's get let's get Rich a hand. That's great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now